The National Assembly complex was under lock and key on the second legislative day of the week. Parliamentary staff as well as journalists were affected by the organized labor protest. Um, this is not the time to stay at all under any circumstances. So for me, it's just an appeal that they should kindly return to work and let's continue the process of dialogue. Upon resumption of plenary, the president of the Senate, Senator Godwin Lapabu, tendered an apology for the delayed commencement. Consequently, the NLC and TUC protest was tabled as a matter of national priority. This morning, some of us found it difficult to access the National Assembly. And right now, our aides are not in our offices. So, the intervention of the National Assembly is very apt and timely. The motion for debate is advanced. It is wrong to have attacked somebody for protesting as they did. But it is equally wrong for myself and others in 35 states to be punished for what happened in Imo. We have obligation not only to intervene, but to do everything we can to find solution. But to also take advantage of this moment to appeal to the federal government to honor their own obligation with regards to the 35,000 naira increase across the board is implemented by the 36 states and the 774 local governments. We urge the Nigerian Labour Congress, the TUC, as to well all protesting unions to immediately call a stop to the ongoing strike in the national interest. Prayer two mandate the Senate President and the Senate leadership to immediately summon a meeting with the protesting union leaders with a view to resolving the issues immediately. Those in support of prayer to say aye, and those again say nay, the eyes have it. The Senate adjourned with a two-pronged approach with the hopes that their intervention would engender a solution to alleviate the suffering of Nigerians. From the National Assembly, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Okay, welcome back. Uh, Lalo Akonde joins us next. Former presidential aide. What a week it's been, uh, Lalo. Uh, in the news, news week. <laughs> what a news week. Yeah, it's well, interesting. you know, uh, several scenarios now. Labor mm. dominating the week in the news with uh, their strike and how it was handled. Then, I mean, we'll also get to see if there's been any, or what your impression is about the PDP's call to for uh, averting any potential or thoughts or intentions of getting a one-party state, uh, probably it will be some opposition stance. So let's see how I can look at some of this matter. So first of all, right, right. let's take a look at how the strike went on, what happened before that time, during that time, and after that time. How do you think all of that were handled? Well, I, I think that uh, the, the, the first thing is that we are glad that they uh, sorted it out uh, fairly quickly, you know, and uh, the, the nation didn't have to waste uh, too much time, you know, uh, when there are quite very serious problems to deal with in the country. But it was bad enough that, you know, we, we essentially uh, crumbled and stunted uh, economic work uh, for at least 24 hours or almost two days. However, we must give kudos uh, to the National Security Advisor, who took the initiative uh, to call uh, the meeting that resolved this. And one we wonder, as we commend the, uh, the NSA, uh, Mr. New Ribad, one we wonder, you know, uh, where the labor ministers were, actually. They were at the meeting, but uh, it is important to note that the, the Ministry of Labor, or whoever, I mean, now we have two ministers there, it's one of the hardest uh, portfolios, without a doubt, in the federal government, you know, for obvious reasons. You know, just look at the history of the country, 
look at how much uh, tension exists uh, around labor issues. So whoever or the people in those ministries must be motivated. They must be people who want to do the job. You know, we have all kinds of bosses that uh, maybe guys, you know, wanted something better uh, and didn't really think that uh, uh, that portfolio was exciting. But if they accepted to do the job, they need to do the job. Labor gave one week notice and there was no response of any kind for the whole one week until the NSA had to intervene and look at how quickly the matter was resolved. So they, 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 they have now arrested, you know, according to the NSA, they've now arrested uh, some of the uh, suspected culprits. Do we expect that they should have read out the names of those who were arrested? I think so, you know, because it has to be transparent. We, you know, I mean, uh, that, that we improve uh, uh, trust and, and people's confidence in the process. You know, but we must commend the, the Inspector General of Police, you know, who had said before that there will be an investigation. And now, no, but, but the, the Labour yeah. said they didn't have confidence in the IGP. So they preferred an NSA-led intervention, which is what it eventually came down to, because they right. said that the hierarchy of the police were in, were in the same hotel where their uh, comrades were staying, yeah, and right. they were aware of what transpired. In fact, they, they, they were telling us behind the scenes to hush hush that, look, the feedback they got from them was as though that not just the, the police hierarchy, but Ministry of Labor too were uh, seemingly, mm. you know, somewhat approved, proven what, what of what transpired. That was a sense they got from it, even though they, they stood corrected. But NSA leading this intervention. How about mm. that? Yeah, so uh, we, we, we hope that the investigations will be uh, thorough and, and, and very objective so that we know exactly what happened. That is what the Inspector General of Police has, uh, has promised. And don't forget also, uh, and we have to be uh, uh, fair about this, the, 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 the commissioner for police in Imo State was actually moved after the incident. Yeah, but we know why. Well, you know, but it wasn't I, it's so yeah, directly so, it, maybe, at least from, from what the IGP said. Well, maybe, maybe not. But I, I'm saying that we should open the uh, expectation that let's see what the outcome is going to be, and we should give the credit that you have a, an IGP who is saying that yes, you know, we're going to deal with it. We will be watching to ensure that this is properly dealt with. And like you said, you need the names of the corporates and the other corporates that are still at large ought to be should be uh, apprehended and they should be taken to court, and this matter should be uh, uh, taken to the full extent of the law, because it's important, you know, not to promote that kind of violence and intimidation that led to beating up on Do you agree the with the president. school of thought that, that suggests that the NSA is being bogged down with this matter, which ordinarily shouldn't be in this purview, and as such, they shouldn't make it a precedence, mm -hmm. such that any such thing happens, he is back in the fray because he's got bigger uh, things to fry. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I was surprised also that it was the NSA that uh, summoned the meeting. I remember that previously it, it was the chief of staff, uh, Mr. Bajabia Miller, that has uh, played that role, you know, even in recent times. So, so I mean, I, I'm not quite sure, you know, I'm not entirely certain why it is that is Well, I think NSA part of the reason was, is. NSA was also in the way when that happened, and they said that it was the NSA that placed a call through to mm -hmm. when, I think they said the people who hijacked or took uh, Mr. Giro, they were taking him somewhere, can't remember where he himself spoke about that, they would have killed him or something like that. And so the NSA mm -hmm. put a call through, and then that staved off any further whatever was going to happen. So right. they trusted and believed that since he was proactive in that regard, because they tried to call the IGP according to them, what they told us here, he didn't respond. They reached NSA, he responded. So. They grab the lowest hanging fruit, as it were. As it were. Well, I mean, so, 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 I mean, kudos to the, to, to the NSA. They grab you know, the we... more responsive fruit. <laughs> you know? I mean, I mean, it's, it, it, it's good that we get somebody know. on the ball and now... Potato, it, potato. The matter has been resolved, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> when you say the lowest hanging fruit, sometimes it seems you're talking about hierarchy, and I know that's not what we're talking no, no, about. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> grab the more responsive fruit. Oh, well, it, I mean, the kinds of things that we have witnessed mm. from the weekend up until now... Yeah. So, quite a lot, quite a lot for us to digest. And I think for a number of people, continues to indicate to them, you know, the trajectory that our country is taking. And, and we cannot ignore, 
uh, the recently concluded elections in, in Kogi, mm -hmm. Imo, and Bayelsa states. I'm sure you must also have uh, kept an eye on, on those as well, and also looking at some of the commentary that had come through even before the elections. Some people thought it was uh, a window through which INEC could redeem itself. You have spoken extensively on some of the reforms you think that INEC should undertake. Um, how would you say that the electoral body discharged of its duties in these elections? Well, I, I, I think that uh, we still have to uh, look at, I, I think there are still ongoing uh, uh, developments, uh, but I, I think the, the case in, uh, I think it was Kogi, where uh, some of the, the, the results we are reading ahead of even the voting uh, still raises quite a bit uh, of concern. I mean, I don't want to go and, uh, you know, uh, pound on INEC, you know, uh, uh, again, hoping that uh, they are trying to fix, you know, the, uh, the, the issues. But when you have a situation that results are being written out, uh, I, I, I think it calls for some very uh, profound uh, reform of the agency itself, if indeed uh, you had your staff compromised up to the point that they uh, released the, 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 the result sheets and results have been filled. This kind of thing does not inspire any kind of confidence mm. or trust. You know, uh, but, but let's hope that, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the commissioners, the, the, the INEC leadership will be able to really get to the bottom of this kind of stuff. Now, uh, we, we must concede that, you know, of course, the people that work in INEC are also Nigerians, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, so it's not so much uh, trying to say that uh, this is something that is just localized to INEC, but it still remains the responsibility of the leadership of INEC, the chairman, the, 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 the national commissioners, the resident electoral commissioners, to ensure that the, the, the enormous trust that the Nigerian people and the government have given INEC is protected and secured so that we can begin to build trust of the people in the government. There is so much cynicism. And it is this kind of behavior uh, that, 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 uh, uh, that uh, encourages it. So for the election, I think, well, we, we've had uh, the elections is, is, is gone. You know, uh, those who we go to court, we go to court. Uh, but to your point, it is important for INEC to continue to work on improving the trust of the people in the process. Mm. It'll be interesting to see how it is that they do that, because as you okay. said... What, um, it works? No, no, well, yes, I mean, there's also that matter which we've been bringing up and up again. And we've told the Senate that that matter is not going anywhere until we have heard from them. It'll be very interesting uh, when we eventually are able to get a senator as to... You know, whether they are aware that these allegations ha um, as to um, them confirming people who have been reportedly partisan, um, you know, uh, uh, has been brought to their notice and if they're going to be doing anything about it. But today the dailies are reporting, um, I think it's uh, General Abubakar who is speaking on even the conduct of the polls. Thank you so much, Emily. And this is, these are his words. We need to clean up our electoral system says citizens collude with merchants of corruption during polls. And this is very big because, I mean, as you said, the INEC officials are Nigerians and the people who seek to corrupt them, who, you know, who seek, an INEC official will not just wake up, whether ad hoc staff will be, and feel results in, uh, and that person must, be, must have been influenced, you know, by somebody else. So if we were to start a reorientation of what an election should be about. Where would you say we start from? Well, I, I think, you know, and we, we, we've made this point also. I, I think it has to start with some kind of political education that uh, creates awareness, you know, and, and some kind of uh, conscientizing the Nigerian people that power actually belongs to them. You know, it's a democracy. You know, I, 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 and it's the reason why you know, voices have to be loud on this issue. It's a democracy. This is not a military government. This is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Now, so everybody ought to be on the ball on ensuring that that message goes in as deep as possible. And that's why we have to keep on reforming the electoral process. Any, every and any time that we find 
a loophole. Mm -hmm. But to your point, it has to do more with the mindset of the average Nigerian, whether it be a politician, whether it be a, a, a voter, an ordinary citizen, to understand that, look, at the end of the day, power belongs to the people. Now, if we all think that uh, those that get into government and do whatever they choose, if we don't insist when we see an infringement, if we don't raise our voices and say, no, we are not going to take that, then they will continue to behave in such instances. And the issue of the INEC uh, commissioners, I think the two or three of them, is an issue that we must keep alive. It's interesting that uh, the PDP issued a statement and said that they are afraid that this current president or this government is, is leading to totalitarianism. I said, you know, what did the PDP legislators say in the Senate? We have, I'm sure, more than 30 about PDP senators in the Senate when the confirmation of those uh, commissioners was going on. What did they say? Not even a whimper. It was only Mr. Uh, the, the public secretary who issued a statement from PDP. You had PDP senators in that Senate, sitting down, down, down in the Senate, pretty, watching the whole event, watching Akpabio bring his chief of staff, SS, uh, former SSG, to become a, a national commission. And, 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 and the PDP senators sat down there and just clapping. And now the same party is saying that they are afraid that Nigeria is going to become totalitarian. Now, we must begin to take ourselves seriously. If the PDP and LP are going to be an opposition, they have to be a responsible opposition. They have to stop and raise their voice. They have to raise hell. I would have expected the PDP and the LP senators to raise hell on the nomination of a previous SS, uh, former SSG. But they did not. Would they be afraid that if they did, they might lose some of the perks that were supposed to come to them? They were not going, they, they, they were not in the office, they were not elected into office for the perks. They were elected in the office to but, serve the people. But when uh, you're right, yeah, you know. I, I don't know what you're saying, you know, but, but the point is that, the, and this is part of the awareness that we need to create by raising our voices that look, when you are oh. elected, you are elected okay. to serve. It's the reason why I suggested the I last always call them, they are our servants. They have. I mean, other than the uh, Auditor General servants, so he um, was like, okay, let's go to him, by the way. Ayo, go ahead. Uh, Chamberlain, uh, thank you. Uh, Sakode, just one question from me, really. When uh, you and uh, Marco were having that conversation, it just suddenly occurred to me, or was it you and Chamberlain, it just suddenly occurred to me that the NSA, the office of the NSA, is part of the office of the president. I remember um, when uh, he was hosted by the previous NSA, he said, the previous NSA said, this is your office to the president when he visited. The chief of staff is also in the office of the president. Now for an issue that happened between the labor union and the government of a state, for the president, or the president's office, because at the end of the day, it's the president that's intervening. To be the one to be taking care of such an issue, when, as you said, labor is there, and the National Assembly even also made a call. Isn't that over-centralizing? Isn't that um, giving too much attention and too much power, over-institutionalizing one individual's office in the nation? How does that strengthen our institutions? Well, so uh, I agree with you that, um, and I, I, we try to make the point that this is the job of the labor ministers. And we have two of them in that ministry. It's not only both of them are, you know, politicians. And so uh, they ought to be the one in front on this matter. And they were not. Now, we don't know why they were not in front, you know, but if we have a situation where somebody else, just like you said, in the government, steps in to fill that gap, we must consider that to be a good thing. But you are right. The institution, the arrangement ought to be that the labor ministers are the ones that ought to immediately respond in some fashion to the notice 
by the, uh, uh, the labor movement that they were going to go on strike. But there was nothing for a whole week until the strike entered day two. So how do we build institutions if the people that are supposed to man those institutions are not sufficiently motivated? I made a point that it's possible that these folks that headed up in that uh, uh, portfolio wanted something better. I said, matter of fact, that is the boss. But look, if you accepted the job from the president, he said, this is your portfolio and you accepted it, then you have to do the job. We don't care, you know, whether you wanted something better or not. Okay. The people want you to deliver. And the president himself, you know, has to be very hands-on. Mm. I mean, he, he has talked about the fact that if people don't, uh, uh, don't deliver, then there will be consequences. Well, Mr. This is Mr. one location where yeah. labor ministers have, well, have shown yeah. that things ought to be done better. And we hope okay. going forward that they will step up. Well, uh, that raises another question for me. Um, yes, the buck stops at the president's table. But it is also clear the president cannot do it alone. It was the previous government in which, we, in which you served that we understand that the federal ministries, departments, and agencies are more than 1,500. And the president is the one that sits atop all of them. So he needs help to be everywhere, so to speak. Raising the question of how our politics or our democracy throws out the right kind of people or not, do you think we are configured right now in a way that, we will be, that our democracy or our system, our government, our people, our nation throws up the best of us into positions of authority for influence such as the one we had in this labor union, in this labor case? Yeah, so, so I, 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 I would like to say that it is a process of evolution, if I may use that word. I think that we have to be deliberate you have to be, I mean, I, and I don't see that much of intentionality. Uh, and I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but I don't think we have had a very deliberate and intentional uh, uh, process to uh, picking people. Now, like we've said before on this program, some of the ministerial picks are excellent, top notch. But there are some that are also quite you know, questionable and, and, you know, raises a concern. So it, it, it's, it, 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 it's, it's both sides. You, you have some good fits and you have some, you know, troublesome fix. The point is that whoever is appointed, we need to continue to tell ourselves that if you get a job, especially a public service job, when you accept to do that job, you got to do it. And if you don't do it, then there has to be consequences. But to your point, generally, I think we have to, as a people, uh, 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 demand more accountability. When and if we demand more accountability, when we put more skin into the game, when the government officials understand that we will not accept just anything, I guarantee you that you will begin to see a change, a movement towards reform. But if we all sit down and just sip our teas, sit in the veranda on election day, uh, have a bottle of beer, and just uh, gist all the while without taking action, without getting involved in the process, without ensuring that we vote and make our vote count, if all, we, if, if all we do is just, you know, hang around in our homes and, and just enjoy ourselves, well, the political leaders will continue to push whatever they like. But uh, if we continue to engage and raise our voices, I guarantee you that there will be a change. All right, uh, Lalo Akonde, former presidential aide, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much, Wally. Just a couple of weeks.